understand how much, how much money you make. A little bit less than a billion um, U.S. dollars. <laughs> Seriously, how much money you make? In the, it's, I'm in the vicinity. I'm in the, the vicinity. A little bit less than a billion. I am the definition from rags to riches. I know you have watched a video about the Jamaican richest woman, Trisha Bailey. But I want to highlight some key points from that video, which I know many have overlooked and probably wasn't even paying attention to say, hey, let me take notes and let me apply these to my life and see where it can get me in the next five to 10 years. As my mentor Jim Rohn would say, if you want to be wealthy, study wealth. And at the end of this video, you will understand that the things that wealthy people do, if you listen to them, they all do the same thing, like literally. So without further ado, let's get right into it. But they also say about America, it's racist. The system is not designed for people like you and who look like you to succeed. It is definitely designed not for people that look like myself. Um, one of the things that I did was I stayed focused. Focus. I'm, I'm one of those people who my blinders are always on. Like in the horse race, you put the blinders on the horse so that they don't look around. When I open a store, I don't care about my competition. I don't even care if they're right next door to me because I know what I provide and how I'm going to do it. And I go with it. With everything that is happening these days, especially with social media, it's easy to get distracted and lose focus of what you're doing by just even simply comparing yourself to other people's life, which you know nothing about really. You just see a picture on the internet and you don't know what's happening in the background. And before you know it, you lose focus of what you're doing, you get depressed, you get distracted and feel like you're not making any progress. So you need to block out what's happening and focus on your target like a eagle in the sky focused on its prey. So you need to focus on your target. When it becomes difficult, I fall back on God and I keep praying and then I keep working and then I keep praying some more until I get to the point where I am now. Target. I do believe in miracles, but you have to make it happen. So whatever you want, you have to work and pray for it. Don't just sit and pray and expect it's going to happen. You have to put in the work and guess what? God help those who help themselves. Manifest things, put things in the here. You want a hundred million dollars? Put it in the here. Figure out a plan, start work towards it. It doesn't matter, you have to put it in the here, say you want this and work towards this. Pray for it, work for it. Trust me, the universe works in mysterious ways, so you better put what you want out there in the universe. Remember, death and life is in the power of the tongue, so use it wisely. Money See? was forever something that I knew that you, you can't ramp with it. You need to make sure that you're saving. When I was in high school, my mom gave me $10. For, per week for lunch. And at the end of the week, I had $6. Now she gave the same money to my sister and Tuesday she, was, she didn't have no more money left. But uh, so I've always been structured, disciplined, and I, tr I truly believe that God chose me to be in this place. Wisely, save money, save, save, save. It doesn't matter how much you're hurting, it doesn't matter how much you make. You have to save something. Definitely, she didn't become this wealthy by just saving, but guess what? When an opportunity comes up, you have to have something to start with. If you need to do something, it's better you have $100,000 saved than zero. It's easier for you to get money from the bank for assistance with $100,000, just example, versus you having zero. Now, think about you going to the bank with zero in your account and say, bank, I need to borrow some money to start my business. Like, who's going to look at you? But if you have a $100,000 now, you may get some assistance. She also gave a very practical example of her sister. Two person, same situation, same income. At the end of the week, $106. At the end of the week, $10. And this is the reality in society. So it's like you have two guys making a million dollars per month. One saves 600000 at the end of the million, and the other is wondering where on earth the million dollars went. But guess what? It all depends on what you do with what you make. So if you find yourself in a situation where you don't have any money, you can't save, you need to do a self-check. You have to be able to save something. You can't just get all your money and then everything is just going out through another window like, like that. No, you have to know where your money is going. So you need to budget. You need to budget. Check what you're wasting money on. That case, see on a Friday evening that you don't deserve, you cut it out. 
budget and start saving little before you know it you start getting more money to manage those who have more more will be given unto them those who don't have any it shall be taken and on me say it we'll check matthew because what happened jamaicans and caribbeans that come migrate to the u.s we don't feel like you need as a handout or we are privileged or we're expected to be given certain things and we know that we have to work for every single thing Huh, my friends who love to have the government give them handouts the government should do this the government should do that you need to cut that out don't sit and wait and handouts from nobody at all so that mindset of the company should do x the company should do y the government should do x the government should do y eliminate it it won't help you it won't benefit you any at all so just get rid of those kind of mindset you have to fix your mindset, fix how you think. I hate to do this type of comparison, but check the mindset of a poor person versus someone who is wealthy. Two different mindsets. It's like they are just at the very different end of the spectrum. One is going to say the government is responsible for X, Y, and Z, and the other is going to be accountable and take responsibility for every God Almighty thing. That you have, and sometimes it just means you got to suck it up. One of the reasons why I started my first company is because I was told um, I didn't know that you were black. And so I started getting harassed and I said, okay, well, now I have to create my own. And I created my own destiny. No, my friends, imagine she had sat and whined about racism and now she was being treated. Where would she be today? Some solutions are obvious and straightforward, but I don't know why individuals don't do them. You don't like your job, change it. You don't like your boss, you can become your own boss. It's literally that simple. Don't be that miserable complainer because at the end of five years of complaining, complaining, guess what? Things will remain the same. The next five years to come, you'll be complaining and nothing won't change unless you change and take responsibility. So whatever problems you have, whatever challenges you are facing, you have to work on a solution for that problem. The answer will never be complaining. And you know, Was it hard to suck it up? Oh yes, it's always hard. And how bad was it sucking it up? One of the things that I do, I live in every moment. So if it's a moment where I'm experiencing the deepest level of racism, which I do until today, Two weeks ago, I'm experiencing it still. I don't live there. I will experience it. I know it's happening, but I keep my blinders on and I'm progressing and I'm making changes and adjusting so that I can go back and say, you know what? You didn't want to serve me in your restaurant. I'm going to come back and buy it and kick you out. I want you to deal with your problems by becoming rich. And you know what? I've always had this belief. If everyone was supposed to deal with racism the way she dealt with it, trust me, there would be no racism against black today. But if you're going to sit and whine, what's that going to fix? Seeking acceptance, what's that going to fix? In terms of lifestyle, tell us about the life you live in America. Does it match the sort of lifestyles of people who generally have that kind of wealth? Yes, yes. Uh, I, so my lifestyle is, um, I, most of my time I like to spend with my little people, my little kids, my children. Um, but my lifestyle is definitely a very, very privileged one. Um, from, I have all the resources I possibly can have. So yes, it does match what they would look at as the rich and famous lifestyle. What's the one toy you always wanted to have and know you have it? A jet. <laughs> <laughs> that's that yes a jet that's that was a toy i wanted to have um and i now i travel that way bailey buying up real estate in jamaica so have a lot of other people wouldn't you say that a real estate bubble is being created in jamaica i don't think so i think that jamaica is very economically very wealthy and there's a lot of resources and opportunities, not just from people who are living here in the country, but also people who are abroad who are coming. And I believe that the baby boomers in, in the U.S., they are spilling over. So they are looking for resources and places to retire to. And we just happen to have the best country on earth. So why not? But what about boom and bust, inflation and the threat of recession? In every economy, there's always corrections. So you might come down maybe 10, 20 percent which we're expecting right now in the U.S. to at least 30% downturn in the real estate market. But in 10 years, it's going to continue. So when you invest, you have to invest for the long haul. That way, you're going to reap the maximum benefit that you possibly can. I know these points might be subtle, but 
you have to invest. There is no way you're going to build wealth without investing. It's not possible. And it's important to know that when you're investing, there will always be something to worry about. If it's not inflation, it's a war, it's a pandemic. But you have to stay focused and focus on the long term because then is when you'll really see the great rewards of investing. But is there any such thing as the benevolent millionaire, almost billionaire? Don't you have to be ruthless to make the kinds of money you've made and to keep that money in your coffers? No. You do not have to reroute this. I am, I don't think anyone at my staff, one of my employees, one of the managers described me as, I rule with a iron fist, but a delicate heart. I am a businesswoman, so I'm stern and I will make decisions quickly, but you do not have to be ruthless and be unkind in your development as it relates to money. No need to bring a barrel back home, but family and friends do benefit from Bailey's largesse. And if they start a business, I'm right there with them, holding their hands, walking them through it. Now I have boundaries. It's not a handout. You have to work for it. I have to work for it. And as long as I see that that work is there and that discipline and your morals remain intact, because what happened with people, when money comes, morals start going out the window. Your morals have to stay intact in order to engage with me because otherwise I, don't, I can't be around you. A very important thing I want to highlight is that she's living a life of luxury, but guess what? It is being paid for by asset. So don't be the individual now who is trying to live a life without having an asset to pay for it. And that is a mistake a lot of individuals are making today. So that's it for now guys. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.